our Savior. We praise you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Stand together this morning as we join our voices in worship. We sing the wonderful cross. When I survey. Christ the Lamb of God. Your gift of love they crucified. They laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named a fraud and sacrificed the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, So lost, 
I should have died, but you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod and to be called a Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Christ the Lamb of God. Please bow with me in prayer, please. Father God, again, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for this time that we sing about the Lamb of God, sending your Son to climb up on that cross and die for our sins. We thank you for the plan of salvation. We just pray, dear God, that as we go through the week, we will exclaim it to each and every one what you've done for us. Lord, we thank you for this special uh, <coughs> service today as we as we come before the table. We pray, dear God, that each one of us will search our hearts and, 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 and confess our sins and be ready to receive it. We pray that we'll forgive those who have sinned against us. We ask, dear God, that you'll just Make our hearts ready and prepare us. We pray for this offering, dear God. We ask that it will be used to further your kingdom here on earth. All these things we ask in your son's name and for his sake. And amen.
That was okay. Um, Well, this morning we are uh, looking at Christ as the Lamb of God, and uh, so appreciate Jeremy's leading us in the song Lamb of God just a few minutes ago, and we're going to be in Exodus chapter 12, if you want to turn there, and a little sub, subplot here, what's going on in Exodus chapter 12, uh, and a little bit before, uh, God has been sending the plagues upon Egypt and, and Pharaoh, and uh, casting his judgment upon them for uh, keeping Israel captive. And so the plague of the firstborn, as it begins in chapter 11, uh, is about to take place. And the father here in, in chapter 12 gives Moses and Aaron uh, instructions. And we're looking here in uh, verse 5 of chapter 12 in Exodus. And he says, the animals that you choose must be year old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. And then we go down to verse 21. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. And many of you know the story. The father says, tonight at midnight, I'm going to come and kill all the firstborn children. And livestock. But if you go and do as I say, you take the year old male without defect, you slaughter them, and pastors are going to talk about this in just a few minutes, but you slaughter them and then you wipe the blood across the doorpost, doorframe of your home, I know that I, that's a home that I will pass over. And so as we look at Christ, the Lamb of God, we see here in section 1 that Christ is the sacrificial lamb. And much like the Passover lamb that we see in Exodus 12, the father passed over his judgment on those homes that, was covered, that, that were covered by the blood of that lamb. Much like the father passes over his judgment on us who are covered by the blood of Christ. You see, there is no condemnation in those who believe in the name of Jesus. Amen. We do not stand condemned anymore. And today as we are soon to take part in the Lord's Supper. Not only are we not condemned. But you know there's perks to being a child of God. Can you believe that? There are perks to being a child of God. And one of those perks of being a child of God is. We get to take part in a meal that we don't deserve to go to. But we are invited to the Lord's Supper because of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. There's a couple of things, a couple of points here in your outline that, that, um, that we look at. First, he was separated from the flock. He was separated from the flock. Now, we think about separation. We think about maybe separation anxiety. I don't, anybody here have separation anxiety? Maybe you're, you just sent your kids off to, to kids camp. Believe it or not, you know, there were several nights maybe every single night if I start to think about it, where we had children crying because they missed mom and dad or they missed home. And it wasn't just little girls. I mean, there were, there were boys that cried because they missed mom and dad. As a matter of fact, two nights, if I'm not mistaken, Jeremy had to hold me because I missed being at home. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Jeremy. But separation anxiety is very real. Some of you have never been away from your kids more than maybe a day or so. God bless your soul. I don't know how you do it. Um, I have a hard time being near my kids for a week straight. Um, but we see that the Father separated Jesus the Lamb. And in our life, we are called to be holy, are we not? And what is holiness? Take this idea of holiness. The, the, the clearest picture and example I've ever heard of holiness is, is merely to be separated to God. We separate ourselves from the world and we separate ourselves to God. That is what holiness is. And yet it almost seems that Jesus did the exact opposite. When he left his throne in heaven, he humbled himself when he became the form of a man, took on the form of a man. 
he, Philippians 2 says, he did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, even though he was God. So God the Father allowed God the Son to be separated from holiness, from, from perfection. And it's because of his separation that we have freedom, that we have life, and that we can take part in this Lord's Supper today. We also see in the outline that Christ, the sacrificial lamb, was without blemish, sickness, or bruising. Or as it says in verse 5, without defect. He was perfect. Now, I, I can't help but to think I, I am such a bargain shopper. I, I, I paid $11 for this shirt, and honestly, that's about a dollar or two too much for me. Okay? I go to Kohl's only when I have like a 60% coupon. Can I get an amen? You know, moms, let me use my Kohl's charge bucks and my card, and you get it. I'm a bargain shopper. But when Jesus says to bring your sacrifice, or when the Father says to bring the sacrifice, the Father's not saying, I'll just bring the, the, the scrawny one over there that's no good. Bring the ugly one that nobody likes. The Father says, I want you to bring the best. Guys, that calling has not changed. He still wants us to bring him the very best in, in every aspect of our lives. The very best in every aspect. And it's not the sense that our best can somehow earn more of God's love or, or our best can, can, um, can make him uh, like us more or, or that our best can, we can work our way to heaven with our best. It's not that. It's just that God requires the best out of us. Why? Because he gave his very best for us. God will never call you to do something that he's not willing to do himself. And then you think about it in the, in the sense of we live in this, this temporary temple here. We live in this temporary world where everything will pass away. The old has gone and the new has come. Every sacrifice that you make ultimately is temporary in any ways. Every drop of pain, every anger, every negative feeling that you, that you experience, even positive feelings. We get on this mountaintop some high, sometimes because we get so happy and we're so, we're so excited. Listen, all feelings come and go. And yet, the wonderful part is when we sacrifice for the Lord, maybe we, He calls us and we sacrifice in, in our obedience to Him. You know the only thing that's not temporary? Our rewards that we're building up for ourselves in heaven. Isn't that like our God? Who already gave us the best. And he's like, look, I already gave you everything I got. But if you continue to be obedient to me, you're going to build up for yourself even greater things in heaven. That's our God. I'm wrapping up my part with this, with this quote. And it says right here, Often we think too much of our sin and too little of our Savior. We think too much of our sin and too little of our Savior. I'm sure many of you are like me that you struggle with temptation. You allow that desire to give way to sin. And sometimes that sin just chokes you out. We build this huge brick wall that, that keeps us away from God. And it's not something that God built. It's something that we built with our guilt, with our anxiety, with our fears, with our, war, with our worries, with our anger. We build this wall up so high that we can't even tell where God is anymore. We know he's on the other side of this wall somewhere, but we can't even see him. And so we, we start to make too much of our sin, and yet we forget just how great God is. We forget that God has forgiven all of our sins from the past, all the sins that are in your heart right now, and all the sins that you'll, you'll, you'll commit in the future. It's already forgiven. So how does that play, in, or how does that relate to the Lord's Supper today? I think a lot of us today, as we examine ourselves, we say, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to sit at the table with the Lord. I'm not worthy. I have struggles. I have sin. Well, let me tell you something. You're right. You're not worthy. None of us are. And yet it's not our worth that allows us to come to this table today. 
It's the fact that we were invited by our Creator. We were invited to take part in the Lord's Supper by our Heavenly Father. And it's not anything that you've done, but it's because the God who made you has called you to this table today. So as we examine ourselves today through Pastor's message and the video that we're going to watch later, just remember, it's not about you. It's about what the Father has placed in you. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the sacrificial lamb. We thank you for the sacrifice that he made, the sacrifice of sacrifices. There are no other sacrifices that ever need to be made, not another lamb, not another goat, nothing else. Jesus paid it all. Father, we thank you that through his sacrifice we can have life. We thank you that through his sacrifice that we can know you. We thank you through his sacrifice, Lord, that we can make a difference in those around us. And so, Father, as we come to this table today, may we be constantly reminded that it's not of our own doing, but of the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross that we could sit at this table and share in this supper with you today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. From wherever you've been, come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home, you're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. There's hope for the hopeless, and all those who strayed, come sit at the table. Come taste the grace, there's joy for the weary, rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. Heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow 
that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home. You're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart. Come as you are. Thank you, Cindy, for that very appropriate song. Deacons, if you will come and prepare the table for uh, the Lord's Supper at this time. We want to look in just a moment here at John, the first chapter. John, the first chapter, verse 29. John, the first chapter, verse 29 says this. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. John the Baptist said, look. There is the Lamb of God when he spoke and, and looked at Jesus. Why was he saying that? He was referring back to Exodus, the 12th chapter, because in Exodus, the 12th chapter, we find that the first symbol of Jesus that is really can be evidently seen is the Passover Lamb. So today, let's continue with our theme that Jesus is the Passover lamb. You'll notice in your outline that first of all, we see that he is the redeeming lamb. The redeeming lamb. Now turn over to Exodus, the 12th chapter, and if you'll look at verse 8. Verse 8 says this, that as they were, pre were preparing the Passover meal, the Lord gave very, in very specific instructions, and here's what he said. The people are to eat the meat that night, talking about the Passover lamb that had been slain, he said, you're to eat the meat that night. They should eat it, and here's how it's to be eaten. Roasted over the fire, along with the unleavened bread and the bitter herbs. The first thing I want you to notice about this meal is that a part of it for the Passover meal was the bitter herbs. If we were to do the full Passover meal, part of it would be that we would serve bitter herbs. And there was great symbolism there. And part of it was this. The bitter herbs were to remind the people of the bitterness that they endured while they were slaves in Egypt. But the bitterness also for us is a reminder today of the bitterness that Christ had to go through in order for us to have salvation. The Bible says in Mark the 14th chapter that when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane that he prayed. And here's what he prayed. From the depths of his soul, he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. But nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. He drank from the bitter cup because it was symbolic of the fact that you and I were slaves to sin. And by the redeeming power of Christ, the Passover lamb, we have been set free. But today we forget about how great that is. We, we lose sight of it. Sin is no longer seen as a bitter herb. We, never, we don't think about it. Being, we're not taught in talking about how it is a bitter cup to drink from. Some of you know that I, uh, I drive a black SUV vehicle. And some people have said to me, why in the world do you drive a black car SUV? Is that on purpose? And I say, yes, that's, that's something that I've wanted to do for years. It's black on the outside, black on the inside. And it all started years ago when I was a teenager and I worked at, uh, where I worked, there was a man there that I uh, grew to appreciate. He was, uh, I guess, around 30, 35 years old and appreciated his uh, success in his work. And 
uh, became a friend to him. And one of the things that he had was he had a black, he had a black Chevy Impala. And I'm telling you, he kept it spotless all the time. And I thought that was just the greatest thing I had ever seen. Well, one day he drove to work. It had been raining a lot. And so over, the, over several days, you know what happens when it rains, you know, for several days and you're driving. Well, he pulled into work and it had that thin coating of, you know, grayish, dark on the outside. And during break, I do what a 16-year-old is supposed to do. I went outside with my index finger and me and a friend rode all over it. Wash me. Not a good idea. About an hour later, he found me and got in my face <coughs> and spoke to me words that I don't know if I should repeat. <laughs> uh, and uh, threatened me with an inch of my life and then he turned around. You know what he did? He left work and he went and washed his car. You may say, why do you have a black car? It shows dirt. Well, the good thing is that it shows dirt. The bad thing is it shows dirt real quickly, and it pressures me. You see, what we've done today with sin is we've glamorized it. We've painted it in rainbow colors. We've put sparkles and pixels and glamour with it and said it's, it's a beautiful thing. No. When we see sin for what it is, we see that it is a bitter darkness. And against it, when we see it as dark, we also see it more clearly. You see, if it's not dark or black, then, then, then it, it's camouflaged. If we put it and paint it in any other color, it, it camouflages and we don't see it as quickly. Part of what we're doing today is, yes, this is a dark time. But it's a good thing. It's a good thing for us to be able to see how the darkness reveals our sin so that His glorious light can come and bring relief to us. Now in just a few moments, we're going to watch a video. And a video uh, of those who have come to Jesus for forgiveness. They've given their hearts to Him. They've trusted in Him and they said, Lord Jesus, save me. And the darkness and the blackness of sin has been washed out of them. They've been gloriously saved. And the question I want to ask you today is this. Before you partake of the Lord's Supper, have you been to Christ? And have you taken Him as your Savior? Because He took the bitterness and then there's one other thing I want you to see. He took the fire. The Bible says that the Passover lamb was supposed to be roasted. You may say, well, of course. No, not necessarily. The commandment is given very clearly. It says, the Lord says, do not boil the lamb. He is to be roasted. Why? Because it is symbolic of the fire that later Christ would have to go through. You see, the wrath of God, the song that we sang, the second hymn that we sang talked about Jesus Christ being the Lamb of God and how that He bore the wrath of God. Mark 14, verse 36 says, At three o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That means that the wrath of God was being placed upon Him. He endured it all, the fire. Christ, the Passover lamb, passing through the fire that we might be delivered into His glorious presence. We're going to watch a video and then the deacons will have the washing of the hands to show that, we're, that all of us need to be cleansed by the Lord Jesus and rejoice in what He's done for us. All right, so our first baptism today, his name is Hayden Bennard. Uh, he has a great family, and um, they've been doing a lot of traveling this weekend and did a great job for getting back tonight. So excited to, uh, to baptize my new brother in Christ. Hayden, does this baptism mean you're ready to walk with Jesus every day for the rest of your life? Yes, it does. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's go. We've done enough of these. I know it looks pretty like we're really close to the pole up there. We are down here too. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, Hayden, it is my pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Seems like all I could see was the struggle Haunted by ghosts that lived in my past Bound up in shackles of all my fears this prisoner and say to me son stop fighting a fight it's already been won and I am redeemed you set me free so I'll shake off these heavy chains and wipe away I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. I'm redeemed. All my life I have been called unworthy. church and already a blessing to us we thank the Lord for you and uh, this is Anna and she has given her heart to Christ we're so grateful for that Anna does this baptism mean that you want the rest of your life to count for Jesus yes it does my privilege my little sister oh you want to go together oh we got synchronized baptizing <laughs> this is everything that Chuck said but this is Maggie Great family, and they just want to be baptized together. That's so, all right, I don't know. All right. <laughs> Maggie, I baptize you in the, in the name, name of Father, Son, Son and, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. There you go. Man, man, man. I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. You said.
hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find Thy power and Thine alone Can change the leper spots And melt the heart of stone Jesus paid it all All to Him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. For nothing good have I whereby thy grace to claim. I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's Lamb. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body that is given for you. The second part of the service revolves around the cup. And in this, the story in Exodus, the 12th chapter, we see that Christ is the protecting lamb. It's very important. Verse 7. It says that the blood that comes from the lamb for each household, some of the blood is to be put on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which the meal is taken. And then if you'll skip down to verse 12, the Lord says very emphatically this, on the same night that the death angel passes throughout the land of Egypt, he said, I will pass through Egypt and I will strike down every firstborn of both people and animals. I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. And then in verse 13, though, he says this promise, the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you no destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. Christ is the Passover lamb. The cup we're going to take in just a few moments is the symbol of the fact 
that his blood was shed for us that we might be protected. So the first thing that we see is that he being the protecting lamb, it takes place by his protecting blood. Jesus told the people, he said this, in, verse, uh, in chapter 6 of John, verse 56, he says, The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me and I in him. We, we all, listen, we all need protection. We need protection. Uh, we need insurance protection. We need uh, medical protection. We need uh, police and uh, firemen to protect us. We need protection. But the greatest protection that we need is spiritual protection because all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. All of us are under the wrath of God, and the only place of safety is found in the protection by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The sprinkled blood. So the question today is this. Have you come to Christ and received His salvation? He is the Savior. He is the Shepherd. He is the God. He is the mighty fortress. He is the mighty God. He is the one who is the healer of the nations. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is all in all. Everything that you need and are searching for is found in the Lord Jesus, and it's demonstrated through His protecting, sprinkled blood. The second part about the Lamb of God is found in the book of Revelation. I believe that the days are quickly approaching for the coming again of the Lord. The pieces of the puzzle are being put together, and there's going to come a day in which the Lamb will appear again. You know, when we think of the lamb, what do we think of? We think of the gentle, and, and the lamb is gentle, beautiful, and small, and fragile. All of that is true. But that won't be true in the, book, uh, in the final days because the book of Revelation tells us that he will be the lamb seated upon the throne. And here's what verses 16 and 17 says. During the time of tribulations, it says, they call, they that are left. Now, if you're... In Christ, you're protected from the tribulation. But if you're not in Christ, then those that are in the tribulation will say this. They called to the mountains and the rocks, and they said this, Fall on us, hide us from the face of Him, being Jesus, who sits on the throne, and get this, from the wrath of the Lamb, verse 17. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can withstand it? There's coming a day when the wrath of the Lamb will come. But aren't you glad that if you're in Christ, since you're in Christ, you're protected. You're protected. So this is a time of rejoicing that this is the safe place that is given to all that are in Christ when you take the cup. Give thanks for the fact that He, the Lord Jesus, is our protecting Lamb. Yes. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> For my pardon this I see, 
Nothing but the blood of Jesus For my cleansing this my plea Nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh, precious is the flow That makes me white as snow No other fount I know Nothing but the blood of Jesus Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow, that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Lord, for the special, special protecting blood that you have given to us through your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Take drink. This is my blood that is shed for you. The Bible says that after they had taken this, the Passover meal, there would never be another Passover like that one again. From that point on, there would be a huge change that would take place because now Christ had become that precious Passover lamb. Do you know him today? I hope and pray that as we're covering the table, this covering is symbolic of the fact that it is the covering of his blood that protects and takes care of us. Do you know him as Savior? Have you followed him in believer's baptism? Have you become a part of his body of believers, actively serving him? That is your response to this one who has done so much for us. We're going to stand and give an invitation, a time for you to respond to the Lord. Let's stand.